That steak looks delicious and expensive. You really need a footballer's salary to buy gold steaks from Salt Bay's restaurant. Of course, one of the perks about being a top-level footballer is gaining, well, a lot of money. But one thing you don't hear a lot about is that football careers are pretty short. And when footballers retire, the money dries up fast. But how do footballers go from rich to broke? That's the question. I've got the answer on this week's Justin's Case. Many make more money in just a couple of years than a lot of us will make in our entire lives. But at some point, their careers wind down. Even players like Ronaldinho has gone bankrupt at one point. It might be at an early age because of injury, at 29 because they fell out of love with the game like David Bentley, or at 40 something like Zlatan and Buffon because these guys will seriously never retire. Modern medicine is pretty crazy, huh? And when their careers have passed, something else tends to go with it. Yep, the money individuals who have sometimes earned tens of millions of pounds through what might appear to be a very lucrative career in the English Premier League end up financially nowhere near where they thought they were going to be when they set out. And it's not because people plan to fail. It's, in my opinion and experience, people fail to plan. One of the most famous cases will probably be Paul Merson who um, has claimed in his lifetime he's lost around £7 million. I think he recently mentioned that he gambled away his house deposit and he lives in rented accommodation now and he's still having issues with addiction. Some players may be smart and make investments. Some may still be beloved and turn to endorsement deals. Think of Eric Cantona. He still was appearing in Nike ads or Andrea Pirlo because when I lived in Italy, he was literally on everything despite having just retired. But for many, their most bankable period of their lives is over. And that's when the money disappears. According to the charity XPro, which is for XPros, uh, there's some numbers from around 2014 that around 40% of Premier League players declare bankruptcy after retirement. Most footballers start making big money quite young. And how to spend and save money, it's not quite intuitive. So let's talk in terms of your net income and plan your spending around that rather than the first trap I think a lot of players fall into and they focus on their gross income. Understanding things like, say, taxes and mortgages can be stressful at any age. The average wage in the Premier League is £60,000 a week. So there are people earning in a week about twice what the average person in the same country earns in a year. And then you get to the issue that these, these are young people, these are teenagers who start earning this amount of money. So if players aren't properly guided by their agents, clubs, or their entourage, they can spend money in ways that later come back to bite. It's very important to make sure that you surround yourself with trusted advisors who have got the credentials to actually deliver on what they promise. Because I see it all the time, the client signs a big contract and all of a sudden, people from all corners suddenly start appearing and promising this and promising that. Think of it this way, Barcelona have had several players be busted for tax evasion. Leo Messi got a 21 month prison term for tax evasion. If Messi is getting that kind of advice from the people around him that leads him to get in trouble, then what does that say about the rest of the game? Some players have also spoken about things like peer pressure. There are numerous stories about a player going to buy, let's say, a watch from a jeweler. Something like maybe this one. I went and spoke many years ago to a watch buyer at Harrods, the department store in London. And he said, we like it when a Premier League football player comes in here and gets the latest Rolex or the latest expensive watch because he'll go back to his locker room. All his teammates will come in and say, I want one better than that. That's why I wear this, so that the guys at Oh My Gold don't make fun of me. It's hard to feel sorry for a professional soccer player, given how much they earn, given they have what for most of us is a dream job. But there are these kind of issues. There are issues with addiction. There are issues with mental health. And there are certainly issues with what we could call financial abuse. Listen, not every player is in Golo Kante. Kante is cool with driving a mini or running to training. But just check out Barcelona's players coming into training. Even the non-starters are throwing down on expensive cars. And now for younger players, you may spend that money early because maybe you expect raises or a long career ahead of you. You become accustomed to a certain lifestyle and when that suddenly cuts off when you're relatively young in your life, when you're in your mid-30s, 
that is a big problem. There are so many variables that can alter a career. And without sound financial planning, the money can dry up so fast. One of the biggest systemic problems is that these uh, young people in their early 20s and teenagers are not given adequate financial advice. Uh, I've seen it referred to by The Guardian as suffering financial abuse. Not enough done to give them good financial habits or good advice. There's examples on public record of Liverpool's um, ex uh, fullback, John Arnorisa, who did the important thing and he'd saved a seven figure sum from his wages. And then he entrusted the management of that seven million pounds with someone who just frankly walked away with it. Hey, so we've talked about footballers' money drying up really quickly. And if you like this episode, please, please drop us a like and leave us a comment. And don't forget to hit subscribe or you'll have seven years of bad luck and you'll go bankrupt. I promise it's true, subscribe or else. All right, here's my case on footballers going broke. It clearly happens, whether it's via gambling, money mismanagement, or just plain bad luck. It's something that happens to a lot of players. We quoted the number at around 40%. But when we see that as many as four out of 10 players are ending up broke, that means the issue is not one of personal responsibility, but it's a systemic issue. That means clubs, leagues, agents, and everyone from top to bottom needs to provide these footballers with the financial education and entourage they need to look out for their futures. More than 500 footballers may have lost up to one billion pounds due to bad advice. And that's the advice of the people who surround them, their agents, uh, their advisors, maybe even their close friends and family who, for better or worse, may be taking advantage of them for their own means. So that's just speculation, but it, it seems like that might be the kind of thing that's happening. For some of these players, their professional careers are not just for them. The money they bring in can change the lives of their entire families. And in some cases, even entire villages. Sadio Mane, step forward and take a bow. And listen, the top few players in the world, they'll be fine. Maradona and Pele may have struggled financially at times, but I'm fairly certain guys like Messi and Ronaldo, they've learned lessons from this. But there are so many others who will not have that luxury. One of the things I'm trying to persuade clubs to think about is just getting a list of trusted professional advisors that the clubs themselves have actually interviewed and worked with and vetted. And that's why it's up to the entire footballing ecosystem to do what they can to help footballers learn how to save for retirement and manage those finances. There needs to be some kind of obligation to give some financial education to these players. And the PFA has also been doing their part as well, the Professional Footballers Association. They've got a commercial arm that aims to provide independent advice. But I think the problem is at the end of the day, these are young people, millions of pounds or dollars or euros are going into these bank accounts and ultimately can't control how it's spent or the rate at which it's spent. If this story on footballers going broke is starting to make you think, why don't you check out another episode of Justin's Case? It's about the New Zidans. And it also details what happened to footballers who didn't have the careers that were expected of them. Go on, watch it here or here or wherever my editor decides to place this on screen to make me look like an idiot. There. Okay, bye.